So welcome everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. Today is April the 14th, 2022. And the topic for this evening is worth. So this, um, all of this month, I'm, I'm going to talk about the things that I have learned and also our processing when I'm when I'm going through Jason Estes um, wealth series so if you I highly suggest everybody who who is really interested in knowing more about this to go to Jason Estes um, YouTube and uh, it is MTVO team so just look for that. And when you get there, um, just switch over to the playlist and look under the playlist. One of them would be Wealth Series. Um, and you would be able to uh, like um, go through the, the main videos that I'm going through. And um, of course, I'm not going to repeat everything that he is saying that because what's the purpose of that he he has already said it on his so this is really my understanding and putting my own um my own um i would say the reason and and what it is that that really triggered me and my own thought process through how i learn from him so this one in particular, the, the first one is based on the full prime re resource, which is really the video, the first video. And this one is based on the second one, which is based on fair exchange is the, is really um, what the video that I based this on. However, when I looked at the, the video of um, fair exchange, what really jumped at me is, yes, fair exchange is a big part of it, but then there are also so many of the other more foundation um, conditions that I, I really notice. Um, so first, first of all, why, why do I start going through the wealth series? It's it's kind of been on my radar for a while. However, I have so far um, resisted the, the going through all of the wealth series because I'm just stubborn that way. However, I think um, enough is enough. I just get to the point where I couldn't, there are some things I couldn't quite figure it out. And when I start to go through it, a lot of things started to kind of Oh, like I, it's, I started to get better understanding of why certain things are playing out the way they play out in my, in my reality. So first thing I want to mention is, is that we have lived in an environment where our value system is completely messed up. Um, maybe there are specific people who who still have their value system intact, but as a society, our value system is completely messed up. So what do I mean by that? For example, um, we pay athletes like you know, professional football players or um, all those, those, those people, millions of dollars each season to watch them do what? To play. However, there are people in the society that is performing a much more valuable function. Um, for example, people like teachers, um, for example, people who like, like farmers, doctors. So these people play a, a much more vital role, roles that um, farmers, for example, they grow food so that we can eat, so that we actually keep us, keep ourselves alive. We can, we can absorb nutrients. However, those people are not paid much at all. They are like paid pittance. Um, 
um, compared to professional football players who are paid millions of dollars. So if you really look at that, that this value system, that if you if you are playing something that distracts the the mass uh, the mass people from their own misery, then you get paid lots of money. But for those people who are actually doing something that contribute to society to actually feed people or keep keep um, uh, most people healthy, you don't get paid much. So that's what I mean by our value system is completely messed up. And no wonder how the world seems messed up because our value system is upside down. We don't want to know um, the truth. We want to be distracted from the truth of our reality. So that's why people that can distract us, people that can put up a, um, a completely different value system are paid so much. So, so that's, 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 that's why I named the, 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 the topic of this episode worth is that it's really to highlight that our own value system as a society is quite upside down. And so that's why the, that's why Jason, you know, kind of offered a solution. I'm not saying that his solution is the best solution. That's that's not what I'm saying. Um, he he did. He's one of those people who offered a solution that resonated with me, and um, and so that's why I looked at it and I'm and and I'm going through it and I really want to learn from his experience because he created the wealth series for a purpose. And the purpose is quite aligned with what I'm using it for. So, and I just want to mention that the, the um, our own value system, our own system of worth, of worthiness, is all messed up. And all of this is just part of the, the symptom of a of you know capitalism it, it is really a symptom of the end state of a system that places you know greed and profit above all else so it seems like i am you know really bashing capitalism however i'm not just bashing capitalism i'm also saying the same applies to communism or any of the other isms as well because these are our systems that don't work. Because there are some foundation conditions that are missing in all of these systems. First of all, these, these are systems to control people. And so this, so it's really based on the, the fact that human beings are kind of like animals because these are systems that are the, um, uh, created to manage people as animals. I, I know I'm, I'm being very harsh. However, if you really look at it, most people need an external system. Like that's why we have a criminal code, we have a penal system to Make sure that you know, um, as as kind of a um, a way to deter people from getting too out of hand. So these are all systems that are, has been um, created, and the the basis is that human beings are like animals, or at least a group of people are most likely to behave like animals. There, there are group dynamics that when you have just one individual human beings, is, 
it is it won't um, deteriorate to that. So, however, all of these systems um, is no longer suitable because Earth and the human collective really has elected has unconsciously though to to made a choice to move beyond being animals to we we decided we have decided that we want to grow our consciousness and in terms of growing our consciousness none of the systems that is that we have devised so far is adequate for growing consciousness. These are systems for birding people, bird as in H-E-R-D, herd, birding people as animals. So the, the wealth series is not about creating a system. It's not about creating a system to manage, um, to grow our consciousness. It's actually, about a method to, to play in this reality that is different so that it will allow us to grow our consciousness. And as we grow, grow our consciousness that we can all together play together in a way that is going to um, encourage each other to grow and shift and be able to one day come up with the system that will work for a new kind of consciousness that is moving out of the, mam the mammal state, moving out of the animal state. So some of the things that are found, what I talked about foundational um, conditions, I just wanna mention first, the first of the two, that in my opinion are really foundation conditions. One is truth and the other one is sovereignty. So I did mention that um, we've lived through a time, especially the last couple of years, there's been so many lies told by so many people. And um, this is just really to to kind of rub it in our face it has always there has always been lies it's just that we it it is told more far and few between so that we don't notice that it's that there have been lies and when the lies are just so blatantly told one after another in order to create a very um, specific kind of scenarios to to shift us to to create a, a scenario with us so that you know we get saturated with lies and so now that we or at least I am saturated with the lies that um how do we begin to write but to, to start to shift our upside down values back into being the right side up. The first foundation condition is that we have to really value truth above all else. So what is my definition of truth? So let me just skip my definition first. I uh, personally, I believe that there is no, tr no truth outside of ourself. So my definition of truth is that is whatever feels congruent for you, that's your truth. Now, when enough people um, come together and they, <clears throat> they all feel the same or at least very similar things about um, being congruent about certain things, then those people can come together 
to agree that there is a truth that's, um, that can be observed. However, we have to start with ourselves first. So that's why my definition of truth is what we feel congruent in ourselves. So congruent meaning that our body feels it's congruent. If something is being said, or if the thought that we think, it feels congruent in our body, meaning that we don't, we don't have any you know, second opinion about it. We don't have any stories to say about it. Is that our mind, our, our body, and our soul all feels congruent in alignment with something, then that is the truth. And that's what I mean by there's no truth outside of ourselves. Because um, someone else, the truth for you may not be true for someone else. Someone else who may be from a different background or maybe even from a, a, a different nationality or perhaps a different planet. They may feel different things. And that does not mean that, you know, they are, they're not, um, they are false. It's just that when we define truth as being what feels congruent with us ourselves, then we can start to take charge of finding our own truth. And the other thing that is really foundation about the foundation conditions uh, besides truth is sovereignty. So we, we don't have sovereignty right now, or at least very few people on earth have sovereignty right now. We have given away our sovereignty, or we never even knew that we have sovereignty. So my definition of sovereignty. So yes, my definition of sovereignty is that we, our understanding that we are the one that is responsible for our own experience. So most people blame other people for what's going on in their own lives. And when you start to want to take charge of your own life, the first thing you have to really align with and, and um, start to take charge with is that is to understand that no one else but you is responsible for your own experience. No one else is there to tell you what is true. You are the one who has to know what is true for yourself and stand on that truth and be responsible for how you feel about truth, how you respond to whatever it is that's, that may be things that are happening to you. You are the one that is responsible for how you experience and process the life ex, um, experiences that comes your way. So, so now that I have these kind of two foundational conditions out of the way, um, I want to talk more about what worth is. I couldn't really talk about worth is because if we don't have the truth, we don't know what is the truth, and we don't take responsibility for our own experience, then we really can't know our own worth because if you if you don't know what is true and you don't feel that you're responsible for your own experience then no wonder um we don't know our own worth because how can we start to find our own worth to grow our own worth when we don't even know the truth when we don't even take responsibility for ourselves. So, but after we've started to
started to know and seek the truth of our own um, reality of what's what's congruent within our body and after we started to take responsibility for our own experience then we can start to find our own worth and in order to find our own worth I think um, Jason Estes did mention he throw he threw out a number he says on average like he, he on average anyways is seven dollars an hour is a fair exchange on average like meaning that if you take the the, the most knowledgeable and expert person versus the most um inexperienced person what they are charging and you average all of that throughout the world throughout the the, the you know the the seven billion uh, or almost eight billion inhabitants that's on earth right now the average is seven dollars for some people seven dollars may be so cheap like so below and for some people seven dollars may be life-changing it's so much money I, they don't know how to um you know create how to live up to that so on average seven dollars and he's talking about this in the monetary term However, just know that um, of the, the, the four primary resources, money is just one of them, but this can be applied to all of the other three primary resources as well. And if you don't know the, what the four primary resources are, um, okay, so I just wanna quickly go over them. Um, so life force is one, time, money and um what's one of them oh i think it's called value point it's really your expertise talking about your expertise or your experience racked up experience on certain things and um you can go back to jason's first video or go back to my previous video to to learn more about say the, the prime resources um, so I'm talking, I'm using money to illustrate some points, but this apply to all of the other three primary resources as well. So first is know your worth. So we, ha we have to have a base point. The base point, as suggested by Jason, is $7 an hour. So before I talk about, um, so $7 an hour, so you have to really check in with yourself and ask yourself, are you worth $7 an hour? Like if somebody wants you to do something for them, let's say they want you to take up your time, is $7 um, a if somebody gives you seven dollars, would you give up an hour of your time to spend doing whatever it is that they suggest to do? So you are the one who have to say for yourself and really check in: is this is this is this fair exchange for me? Am I worth this seven dollars? And if you think that, oh yeah, I don't have any qualms about it, no, no stories about it, $7, I would happily, um, let's say go help somebody move for $7 or go and uh, work at a restaurant being a waitress for $7 an hour, I would be happy to do that. Not, not even a conversation in your head. If that's the case, then $7 is, fair exchange for you then that is your worth for a certain kind of activity so for example for me let's say if somebody wants me to um, um work at a at their restaurant and they give me some dollars i would be very happy to do that because you know i'm 
<laughs> I'm more likely than not going to be <clears throat> um, misplacing other people's um, menu items that they have ordered. I'm not even sure if I would be able to carry all the, the dishes and all of that. But if somebody wants to pay me $7 to do that, and I have nothing else better to do, then yeah, sure, I would, I would be game to play that for as long as it's fun for me to do. So I would be happy to do that. On the other hand, if somebody wants me to, you know, um, do hypnosis or uh, conduct, um, uh, uh, like lead them through a meditation for $7 an hour, I would be like, what, are you kidding? I am an expert, or at least, you know, better than the average person at doing those things. $7, I know, no way. I, you know, you have to pay me way more than that. So it depends on the activity. It depends on the expertise of the person. However, you are the only person who would be able to know what is the right number, what is, what is the, the right dollar figure in order for you to do a certain kind of activity. So know your worth. So a lot of us don't know our worth for, because we don't even know who we are. We think we are this, this person. However, I just want to throw it out there that um, we are eternal spirit embodied. We are essentially each one of us an aspect of God. So factor that and really sit with that. And really think of how much you resonate with that or how little you resonate with that. However, um, I think most of the reason why we don't know our worth is because most of us anyways have been brought up in families and societies that don't know their own worth. So um, that's why we, we don't know, we have never been taught who we are and what we are worth. So factor that in, we are eternal spirit embodied. So that is for me, what changed my own um, take on my worth. And when you know your worth, when you know your worth, then you know what it is that you see deserve. You know how you want to be treated. And you know how you want to feel when you are playing with other people in your reality. How you are with your friends, how you, you, you know how you want to feel with friends. And when you don't have the that kind of feeling with the people that are in quotes friends then you know that you have outgrown those friends and you need to go and find some new friends so know who you are and then also know what you're worth and you are the only one who can know your worth and yes, we all can start on $7 an hour. And how do you grow that? How do you grow that is, so you start with $7 an hour and, and then you go from there. You do the inner work. So $7 an hour would be fine for somebody who don't know that they are eternal spirits embodied that they don't know that they are essentially you know a an alternative god but if you're god then seven dollars an hour um may not be enough 
it may not be congruent with you. So you may want to go up to, let's say, you know, let's say $15 and you feel like you say you get it to a number and you feel it. So when you look at a number, um, we've been conditioned to compare ourselves. Well, um, my neighbor is charging, let's say, you know, $15 an hour. And I am about to have about the same experience as them. So my number is $15. That's not the way that um, we're suggesting to do. The way we're suggesting to do is don't compare yourself with anyone else. Just feel it in, in yourself because remember, we are trying to get back to the truth. So when we compare, then we're not really getting the truth. We are getting relative truths. So what we're trying to get at is, is the truth, the truth that resonates with us through and through. So you can't really rely on someone else. So feel, you can rely on yourself and know that when it is the right number, you would be able to feel it and have that faith that your body would tell you the, the right number. So think of a number and then let's say, let's say 25 and you just feel, just sit with that number. So $25 to, for example, for me to um, do, like pick somebody into, let's say hypnosis session. It's $25 enough. And we we'll sit with that. And, and your body would give you, or even um, hear your own mind, there, there may be conversations. Like if you hear conversations, well, $25, uh, there are better things that I can do. Um, I can read my book. I can go to go for a walk. And I would actually enjoy those activities much more than I would to, you know, get paid for $25 to hypnotize somebody. If you hear something like that, then $25 is not the right number for you. You may want to, let's say, bump it up to, okay, so let's just say $50 and you say $50 and you just feel, feel it in your body. Does it feel like, okay, $50, do I want to do, do I want to perform that hypnosis for somebody for $50? Um, and you would feel it in your body if it is the right amount. If it is not, then your body will feel a little strange. So trust, trust your body first is to release condition your body to know what truth feels like and then trust your body trust your body to tell you the truth and when you actually say a number no matter what the number is whether it is 50 100 i don't know 250 whatever number works for you you would when you sit with the right number, you would feel, okay, yeah. There will be no conversation in your mind. You wouldn't say, oh, okay, yeah, well, you know, if 200, somebody paid me $250 for, for, to, to take them into a hypnosis session, then I better you know, be able to perform and be able to, you know, do bells and whistles. And I have to work really hard, prepare myself, you know, for, you know, for like two hours ahead of time to make sure that I give that client in as like really the most special um, experience. If you hear something like that, then maybe that's not the right price that you may be overcharging because if you have to do something extra if you don't think that 
what who you are and what you bring to the table is enough, then you will try to you know convince yourself that if I do this, and if I you know um, be good, if I only eat vegetables and you know, and and pray to Buddha or you know pray to Jesus or whatever, if I do that, then yes, I make sure that 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 client has um all that experience, if you are having that kind of conversation, conversation in your mind, then you know that, that you are overcharging because you're not being you. How can you have fun when you have to have all of these conditions? So the, the right number for you, what you actually worth, not what you can get away with, but what you actually can embody and know that you're worth that number. When you hit that number, it would be no brainer. You would have no conversations. You would not feel that, oh, okay, I have to do all these things. I have to over deliver and all of that. You, no, it would be natural and you would enjoy sharing this hypnotic experience with whomever it is that is willing to pay you that amount. So when that happens, when there is no conversation in your head, in your body, and you're just willing to go for that experience, then you know that is the right number for yourself. And that's knowing your worth. And you may not be at, let's say, at first, it may be simply $7 an hour is really that price that I'm willing to do that with anyone who are willing to pay me $7. And then at some point, you, you can start to grow your own worth. So you would ask yourself questions like, what kind of experience do I want to include in my life in order for me to be able to grow my worth? What kind of, um, so if you are ready to include those experiences and you go for those experiences, let's say if you say, okay, when I have you know, worked with 10 clients and I've really seen a, a good enough base of clients that is really going to give me an idea of what to do under most circumstances. And then I would feel that uh, I'm, I would be worth, like, let's say, $25. And so you kind of find your way to grow yourself from $7 to $25. And then the next step, once you get to $25 and you are congruent with $25 for a period of time, then you would start to ask yourself again the question, what can I do in order to grow myself so that I am worth more? Because I kind of like doing hypnosis. I would like to um, deliver more value and in order to deliver more value I would have to process everything that I have in my mind in order for me to get to the point where I'm comfortable with delivering more value and that would be a journey for yourself mm -hmm. to have so those are the things that you need to do in order to gradually grow your own value, grow your own sense of worth so that you get up to a point where you may not want to grow for a while, to grow beyond for a while. And, and then it could be that, you know, you go up to, go up to let's say, um, I don't know, $300 an hour. And that would be kind of a plateau for you for a while until you get to the next level. So whatever that is, whatever that, that journey, 
that is your own journey to, to do, to grow your own worth, to grow your own your own ability to really embody your own worth and really feel the truth because you we are here to embody truth once again it there's been so many um the old paradigm is about lies and profit and all of that however this is really about embodying the truth whatever that truth means for you. So when you really can embody your own worth with authenticity and you feel that truth, feel, take that sovereignty, responsibility for your own experience, You will get there somehow. And the other thing I want to really bring to the forefront is, it's really about um, fair exchange. So when, it's, when it is fair exchange, you would, enjoy it you will enjoy sharing an experience with someone when you have an exchange with someone that somehow you don't enjoy it for whatever reason you will know that somehow fair exchange just is not a fair exchange and it is really your responsibility and no nobody else's to make sure that all your exchanges are fair exchange. So some of the questions you may want to ask yourself is, well, first of all, uh, are you in fair exchange? Do you feel that, you know, do, are you having fun sharing this experience with somebody? If you say yes, then, you know, end of, end of question. If no, then, but you have to ask yourself, what am I doing to knock myself to really get myself out of fair exchange in that moment? So really look at why. Um, it could be something as simple as, you know, this person reminds me of my mother or whatever, or some, some sort of trauma that you haven't healed. So that's why you feel either drained or you feel compelled to play the victim or for whatever reason, you know, that exchange is not, you don't, you're not enjoying it. You, you don't enjoy that sharing of yourself. Then you have to do the inner work in order to make sure that it's a fair exchange. And I already have mentioned that a fair exchange does not always, um, it's not just about money. It could be about, um, it could be, you know, you have a client that somehow afterwards, um, they are paying your, your worth, um, whatever it is that you ask for. But after you've been with that client, you just felt like the life force has been sucked out of you. So you know that somehow it's, it's not the money. So it's something else that is not a fair exchange. And it is really for you to go back and figure out what you need to shift within yourself in order to make that a fair exchange in all of your resources. So maybe you need to look at what um, old stories, old trauma that you haven't, you haven't quite healed within yourself that makes, that created that feeling of, you know, having the life sucked out of you every time you, you um, interact with that particular person. 
it can be so many things and no one can tell you what a fair exchange is. You are the only one who has to figure it out. No one will create that fair exchange for you. You're the one who has, who has the responsibility to make sure that each of your exchanges, every exchange is a fair exchange for you. Some of the other um, questions you may want to ask is, am I overcharging or undercharging? If you, if you overcharge or undercharge, then it will create an imbalance within yourself. So you are the one who has to find out what is creating that imbalance and do the inner work necessary in order for all your exchanges, all your sharing to be fair exchange. So um, those are the, the, the things. Hmm. Okay, let me just. Um, why is it bad to be not in fear exchange? Well, because if you're out of balance, your body will take a hit. You will feel it within your body um, because we're really stepping into this new energy. And the new energy is like lies and um, greed is going to, or I should say, it's not going to work anymore. You can't fake it till you make it. You can't fake anything. To be honest with yourself, to look at what is true for you, to take full responsibility for your own experience. Those are the essential tool for the new energy. And when you don't start to get acquainted with those tools and start to incorporate all of those things within your how you live your life um, as soon as possible, then your body is going to feel that out of balance within you more and more so as time goes on. Because right now we are, there is so much new information that is hitting us. And if we don't live in our truth, in our own truth, if we don't live with um, integrity, then it is going to take us more, a lot more energy to try to upkeep that lie that we're living with uh, within our own lives. So when the energy is already so condensed and you don't do your best to stay in integrity and stay in your own truth, then it's very easy to you know, get yourself all depleted and misaligned and, and get to the point where you completely miss the mark. And it would simply become much harder for you to learn those lessons in easy steps. So start that right now to, to start to teach yourself what truth is, how truth feels within your body. It's, it's really quite easy. So think of something that you know for sure that is true. For example, something like, um, like the sun is bright. That is true. Like if you ask anybody, they would have the same experience. So you, you're pretty sure that that is the truth. So, and you yourself have that experience is, you know, the sun, every time you see the sun is bright. 
So you feel how that feels in your body. So that gives you what truth feels like in your body. So the more you look at what is true and you feel what truth feels like in your body, you're teaching your body what truth feels like. And then when all of a sudden you throw somebody say something to you, you pay attention to how your body reacts. You would start to feel, you know, wow, my body has a strange feeling. So I don't know this person. He, he or she may be saying something that is they feel true, but in my body, I don't have that true feeling. So they may, for all it's worth, they may think it's true, but in my body, I don't resonate as truth. So that's really one of the easier way to start to teach your body how to learn what truth feels like and how to start to use your body to um, be, be a tool for you to, to tell you what truth feels like. So that when you hear something and you don't know whether it's truth or not, you can kind of check with your body, how does that feel in my body? Does it feel like what truth feels like or does it feel, uh, I don't know. So that's, those are really some of the things that you can start to play with. And, you, and the suggestion is to play with fair, the, the idea of fair exchange with everything which means that everything in your life let's say you eat breakfast and you look at okay how how much effort do I have to put in in order to create that breakfast how much money how much of my time I take in order to create that breakfast and how much do I enjoy that breakfast do I actually enjoy it or no, it's a little too heavy for me. I don't quite like it. So with everything you do, you have that review of is, is that a fair exchange and you play that at, at F, with everything, then you will start to be able to adjust your the activities in your life, whether it is with yourself or with a computer, with your laptop, how much time are you spending? Um, how much of your life force is being put into that laptop? Is are you are you getting your what is what you you want to get out of it? Whether it is with another person, after you spend time with that person, do you feel like it was a fair exchange? Do you feel like you learn something about yourself or about that person? Do you feel like it's feel you enjoyed it? Or does it feel like, uh, I don't know about that. I have to, you know, get my bucket of ice cream to eat in order to get over that encounter. Like, which one is it? If you feel like you have fun, you it, it was good, then you know that there has been fair exchange. And if not, if you feel like you need a, a cookie or a bucket of ice cream in order to balance it out, then you know somehow there hasn't been a fair exchange. And you have to ask yourself the question, what did you do in order to um, be out of balance, to get out of fair exchange? Is it how you, is it the person or is it how you behave around that person? And you have to adjust and you have to be really disciplined enough to get to the point where you get all your experiences to fair exchange. And when you can really play at this fair exchange, knowing who you are, knowing your worth, knowing how you 
deserve to be treated how you want to be treated. And all of these, like looking at all the four primary resources that is under your control, that everything is a fair exchange, then you will start to really feel a shift in your life that for, for starters, you would enjoy your life much more because you, um, you make sure that it's always a fair exchange, that you're always enjoying that exchange. So this is really what, this is a method. When we play this game with this method, it will start to teach us, teach our body, teach our mind to get back to the truth, to get back to paying attention, to being responsible for all of our own experience. And that's all I want to talk about in this topic of worth.